Warning. This game shows scenes that some may find disturbing and triggering. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Letter. We are now on chapter 1, part 5. Well, let's get started. A small crowd has already formed in front of the theater when Ash and I arrive. The Lift Fest, short for Luxborn Independent Film and Theater Festival, attracts a bigger crowd annually, and this year is no different. I've only been to a few indie film screenings with Zach, so I'm not an expert on the matter. But I know that for people hoping to make a break in the industry, getting your film recognized by a local event like this is already a big deal. Especially for a newcomer like Zach. He hasn't even won an award, but... Just getting a confirmation letter that the festival committee wants to include his movie on this year's lineup already put a grin on his face for weeks. Speaking of the guy, he's impossible to miss. At six feet, he appears to loom over most of the moviegoers, and with his large build and heavy voice, there's no surprise when people give him a wide berth as they pass by. It's often easy to mistake him for someone intimidating at first glance. I did, back when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard. Once, early in their friendship. Oh, there's Zack! Zack! He looks cool. Hey, hey, you guys! Long time no see! <laughs> Zack's face lights up with a smile of his own. He moves towards us, taking careful steps in a significant effort to make himself smaller, so as to not bump or accidentally hit anyone. Typical Zack. As he nears, Ash casually raises his hand in greeting and... Sup, Z-Man! My main man! What's crack a lackin', my homie? <laughs> uh, the awkwardness that decides that descends within the immediate vicinity of our small group is palpable enough. <laughs> Somewhere to our left, a girl giggles and then not- and then- And only then do I become aware of my mouth hanging open. I'm almost amazed at how Ash can say that out loud with a straight face. Almost. Considering his track record, I should be used to it by now. Zack seems to be- Don't stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z-Man. <laughs> There's fondness underneath his exasperated tone. If this were any other person, he'd likely be offended. But years of friendship and familiarity have made those words harmless to the other's ears. Or at least enough for both to take it in stride. <laughs> it's been a while, Zack. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. Nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. Chicken? Accident? Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. Oh my gosh. You really have no idea. <laughs> A beat passes, and then Zack laughs. Hey, I'm kidding! You know you can always count on me. It's a story only the two of them are privy to. Every now and then, Ash will enlist Zack's help on... something. Becca and I have never really found out the real deal is with those adventures, as Ash calls it, and both aren't willing to tell due to some unspoken agreement. She insists that if it's Ash, it's likely not something illegal or life-threatening. I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Ah oh, well, boys will be boys, I guess. <laughs> I give Zack a small wave from behind Ash when he eventually turns his attention on me. Bella! Ah! Huh? Rebecca's not with you. Is she still sick? My name's Rebecca. I'm not sick, so... Yeah. <laughs> a bit. But she's up and went to work this morning. 
You know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. Yes, she does. S no, she doesn't. You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. And it's true. They've known each other far longer than any of us in the group, childhood friends and all. But don't worry, Zack. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! Oh, thank goodness! Speak of the devil. Without warning, a hand grabs me by the shoulder and turns me around. Becca, you're just in time. I have to lean back a little with the way her face is almost invading my personal space. But she places her hand on either side of my face to keep my head still. She stares at me intently, concern filling her eyes. Becca, you're squishing my face. No, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> How are you? Are you alright? Why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Those four words tell me all I need to know. Since I don't have any family living close by, and the only other relative I have in works on, fa um, on the far side of the country, I gave my company Rebecca's contact number in case of emergency. I should have known Rose will call her. I push Becca's hands away from my face. Although she lets go, her eyebrows remain drawn together. Oh, no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? <coughs> the beside me, Ash Snickers. I bite back the urge to elbow him in place of trying to avoid Becca's hand as she tries to reach out for the set area. I did my best to dodge her, all at once moving to hide behind Zack. Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zack. Oh, it's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. <laughs> you blacked out? Uh, it's not something to brush off. Eh. Come on, at least let me check it. It's extremely minor. You wouldn't even know it's there. Isabella, this isn't a laughing matter. She did look pale when I saw her earlier. Wow. Thanks a lot, Ashton, you <laughs> traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. What? <laughs> I'm just saying it as it is. <laughs> if you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. You better look fine to me then. I don't know. Something crosses Becca's face, but it's gone be before I could figure out what it is. Oh, that's... that's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? At least. Good. The heck? Is she jealous of Ash or something? See? I'm okay. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. And... and I don't want to miss Zack's film. We can always watch it some other time. <laughs> Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. Oh, that's... that's sad. But you guys should really keep it down. We're starting to attract some attention. So what? <laughs> the premiere! The premiere's different! Right, Zack? I shoot him a pleading look. Zack's a sensible guy. He'll understand. Please understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Oh, for heaven's sake! Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. You're not missing it. We're just moving it on a different day so we can have a medical professional take a look at you. <sighs> look, you guys. <laughs> Ash is like, good grief. Ash's loud sigh unexpectedly cu uh, cuts through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks, something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Yeah, Ash. Say it, man. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me, if she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? <sighs> I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Mm-hmm. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what, if I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Is that good enough for you? I already know the answer before Becca voices it out. 
When at last she releases a deep breath and nods, albeit with a great reluctance, I immediately tackle her into a hug. Thanks, Becca! <laughs> it's always been you with him, isn't it? Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. Is she jealous? What? If you say so. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think I'm gonna get us some snacks. My treat. And then let's head inside. Uh, anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. I pull myself off from Becca to get my wallet from my bag and... What's this? Oh, shit. It's already in Ash's hands before I can even react. Behind him, Becca and Zack are both giving the piece of paper an intrigued look. No! Give it back! It's just a paper. I don't care! Give it! it looks ancient, too. Why do you keep this around? I tried to reach for it, but he holds the paper way above his head. I've never been particularly sensitive with my own height, but right now, I really wish I had that advantage over him. Don't open it! What's the big deal? It's not like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to- Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? Even if it is, it's not for you! <laughs> okay, now I'm curious. I'm telling you it's nothing like that! It's- The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. <sighs> God... Why did he have to do that? I can't breathe. My heart feels stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst. Vaguely, I note how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They are still shaking, but I hang on to it regardless. The awful, sick weight that has taken its core in my stomach back in the house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone, please. Today is turning out to be a horrible nightmare. Send this to five people or else. Well, that's interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see. I don't want to see. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have just thrown it away when I had the chance. That way... That way... It's not a prank! It makes all of them stop. Even I am surprised with how steady my voice is. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw something! Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> See? This is why I didn't want to tell you guys. Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke! Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella. Typically, I don't believe in this stuff. But even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit you're talking about is true. But it's real! What do you think I saw? Oh my god, that's a really freaky voice. I mean, really freaky sprite. <laughs> Hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. Oh my gosh. Jeez, Ash. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Without another 
Another word. I snatched the letter out of Ash's hand and stuffed it back in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm so tired. I got cursed, saw a ghost, probably lost a sale, got kicked out of the open house I'm supposed to be hosting, my own friends won't believe me, and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all off, there's a dull ache at the back of my head begging for a little attention I can't afford to give right now. Honestly, there's only so much a person can take within a single day. I just want to go home, curl up in my bed, and never think about today. But before I can take a single step away from the group... Guys! Zack rarely ever raises his voice, even when there's a point he wants to drive home. And hearing him take on that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Becca. Whatever harsh words yet to come out from the argument immediately die on our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. Whoa, you go, Zack! Yes, man. Yes! And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? Hell yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> we haven't seen each other for months. I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever got to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He... He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been looking forward to this. He even took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca, too. I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet, despite Zack's attempts to lighten things up, or Ash's and Becca's acquiescing get gestures, the tightness in my chest remains. I should have just kept it to myself. Or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out the way they did. No sour mood, no bad vibes. Careless. So careless. Maybe leaving is the better decision for all of us? Huh. I don't know. What is the better decision? I feel like we should stay, honestly. Zachary and Ashton liked that, and Rebecca did not like that. Whatever, Rebecca. Sorry. I can't always please you. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't give a shit. Whatever, Rebecca. I mean, she's not a bad person. She's just a bit- She's a bit of a nag, <laughs> to say the least. Any other day, I'll excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zack. Something he worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. I might be having a bad day, but being with a few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? I don't want to be left with my thoughts, either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. And maybe, if I stay, let our heads cool down first before telling them what happened, they'll listen to me? There's nothing you can't solve with a calm head, after all. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at them. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. Oh, Ash! <clears throat> This time, I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. Stupid Ash. Ash hole. <laughs> Being vertically challenged has its perks, too. What was that for? Stop calling me a crybaby! I'm not one! Yeah, you're really convincing right now, Isabella. <laughs> oh, don't cry. <laughs> I love how it became Ash hole again. <laughs> it went from Ash to Ash hole again. This is too great. <laughs> Stop it! Okay, scaredy cat then. That too! If you repeat that, I swear I'll- 
<sighs> Let's just go. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Whatever. Ash and I exchange looks at that, the same question likely swimming inside our minds. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. But you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And <laughs> it ain't like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? <laughs> I'll be in there soon. One friendly tap on my shoulder and then he's gone. A few moviegoers are still milling about. Some are waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise most of the crowd is already inside. There's nothing much for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gestures for the two of us to head inside. And then? <laughs> are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. To be fair, Zack's the one who brought it up again. In his own movie premiere. Now, the film's just serving as back background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb anyone inside the small hall. Well, except for Ash. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'll all get kicked out for sure. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before anything hap any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referred to. If I didn't know any better, I think we did something that offended her earlier. Oh, boo-hoo, she got her panties in a twist because I didn't want to go home and I wanted to watch the movie. Oh, big deal. Okay, maybe I'm being too harsh, but honestly, she's starting to annoy me. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but geez, he should learn to listen. Plus, didn't he say he doesn't believe in those things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said. But it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. There are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? Oh, the house did change hands over the years, from one distant relative of the Ermengards to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though, and it remained that way up until its current owners decided to sell it. Oh, nope. Why didn't I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering his suggestion, are you? Do you have a better idea? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. You'd do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. There are very few times in my life when I wish my glowers could kill. This is one of those- Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. Thanks, Zack. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Wait, what the heck did he say that was so weird? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. Why is he blushing? Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course, if you- Ashton, if you don't stop- <laughs> Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Becca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Huh? What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? Sorry, but since Scaredy Cat here mentioned curses, not that I'm saying this is one because that's nigh improbable, you'd probably benefit more from someone like Andrew. The stuff you're saying is still really hard to believe. 
But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out, teach you a couple things. At best, he'll let you see things from a different perspective, and probably put your fears to rest, since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too. However, what Zack has also suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me, and they're only giving me these suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or being laughed at. I can take comfort in knowing they're willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. I... Who should I meet? Hmm... <sighs> I think I'll choose the professor. I'll think about it, but if ever, I'd like to give talking to Andrew a try. So, um, Ashton liked that. Is that okay? Won't he have other things to do? He is a bit busy, but he'll make time for me. He's my go-to person when I'm stuck in something. He won't mind if I bring a friend with me this time. If you're sure. I guess that settles it then. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it, yet you're not even paying attention yourselves. Someone needs a chill pill. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. He's so nice. Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. I throw her an apologetic look, even if Ash is the only one she should be reprimanding, but her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting the way she is right now, there's a big chance something's nagging her. We really need to talk. We all fall into a comfortable silence after, the kind you can only share with people you're most at ease with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Night has fallen by the time we exit the movie house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling full of people, those about to head home, those set to meet someone, and even those simply wandering about. Walking in this sea of unfamiliar souls, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as nondescript as Luxborn. I was afraid too. At one point, back when I was new and had just set foot in this place. Now, with familiar faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Becca and I crossed to the other side of the street. The former claiming he's got a freelance job to take care of before the day ends. And Ash? Ugh, who knows. He never tells. Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep, looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zack a lot, much to his friend's frustration. Although he's a busy guy too, in spite of the laid-back air he gives off. Thanks for today, everyone! No problem, Zack. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Oh my god. Why are we hearing it again? Huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. A sensation. Cold. Sickening. Drowning. My, te my chest is tightening. Breathing becomes labored. I can taste blood in my mouth. The edges of my vision blurs. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to me. Pleading even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hands over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering, calling out. No, not me. Somebody. Isabella? Earth to Isabella? At her voice, 
The whole world suddenly snaps into place. The murmurs gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Weren't you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... yeah. Just... okay. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. I follow her without complaint, but not before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street, where the voice came from, where another set of eyes might be peering at me. Nothing. There's only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca parked our ride home. If I'm expecting to see someone or something there, I try not to let it show. Try not to think of the tiny print pinpricks of fear crawling at the pit of my stomach. So you got some other time? Y yeah see ya! Another glance, and with a final wave, we go off on our own ways. I don't know what I saw. I don't know what I heard. I don't want to know. And if this is what will help me sleep tonight, what will give back that normalcy, then so be it. Alright everyone, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye bye